Hey, this is Alan Batista, and I'm going to talk to you about the highly anticipated Humminbird Coastmaster charts, and I'm going to compare them against the Navionics chip that I have right here in the Solux 10. I've been using these for a few weeks now. I've been using the Navionics for many, many years, many, 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 many years, and um, I got to tell you, I'm giving up the Navionics already. A very easy decision, and you're going to see why in a couple minutes here. So. Let me scoot over and show you some of the things in the back of this. Some things in the back of this chart that I'll go over. Uh, here are some of the features. Uh, they talk about this uh, vector accelerated technology. They talk about the different chart views, how it's easy to change from the, the fishing charts to the nautical charts. I'll go through that. Of course, you got your tide charts here, tides and currents. That is the same on. Uh, on the Navionics and the Coastmaster, best I can tell. Uh, depth highlights, that's really nice. Uh, shallow water highlight, that's really nice as well. And then there's a water level offset for uh, adjusting for tides and things like that. So let me go right into the chart itself and scroll through so you have a good idea of what all of these, all these features actually are. So let's talk about this first one, the Vector Accelerated Technology. It says it provides exceptional matte performance and customizable color palettes. Okay. So a lot of people say, well, this is really fast. Um, obviously, I've got no problem scrolling around there. There's a lot of data on the chart. And you can create a lot more uh, customizable um, labels and views. You can see here how I've got quite a bit of information up there. The really neat thing you'll start to recognize are all the depth shadings, right? So look how deep it gets here. There's, there's the Chesapeake Bay Bridge right there. You can see how dark blue it is. And it really starts to get shallow. Look at this right here. I mean, this is pretty neat. You can see all of that really readily and easily. Oh, look, there's that Swan Point bar. You can see how shallow it gets right adjacent to some really deep water. And then you kind of come in here. This is the mouth of the Chester. So visually, there's, there's no doubt that the Coastmaster really exceeds the Navionics. And you'll see that very quickly um, when I switch to that view. But just to scroll through here in the color palette, you can see here are the other options. I can go to something that looks like that. or the shades of uh, darker orange and brown are more uh, more shallow. This shows up a little bit better, but for, for my eye, I tend to like this color palette. It just makes more sense to me, but to each their own. The second thing it wants to talk about here are the uh, the chart views, okay? So we can switch, switch from fishing charts to aqua charts. I'll show you exactly what that is. So I'll just press, press chart, scroll down. Here are the chart options. Immediately you'll see there's a fishing, a navigation, and then a, a user here. So just in fishing, you can do a depth highlight. I have my depth highlight set at three feet. Now I'm in a kayak. I'm not too worried about running around, but there's areas I just want to generally stay out, stay out of. I set it to three feet and you can see all this red here that's highlighted for me. I basically keep out of that. And I can change whatever color I want that to be. I have to have it in red, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, let me exit out of there. Chart objects. Okay, so now we're really getting into it. Navigation. You can turn on all of these different objects, turn them on and off. You can have a lot more here. Obstructions, uh, fishing objects. I highly recommend keeping all these on recs. They give you some good ideas about um, what structure to target. If you're in the area, you might run across them. Uh, you may or may not want some of these things, your ports, your shoreline objects, your points of interest. You have to be really careful about clicking on too many things because your truck gets really, really busy with stuff that you don't really need to see. I found that out pretty quickly. Um, Depths, contours. 
I like my contour density high. I like all these little features. Um, um, I like very fine resolution in the in the contours of depth. I like to see more rather than less. And there's just a lot of stuff in here. Just more than probably most of us will need. Navigation data. I can turn my waypoints on and off if I'd like. And here's your navigation charts. Sets up a completely different chart. So you can switch very easily between your fishing and your navigation. It's almost like a different profile. And I'll just go into that right now. And um, just the way I have it set, you can see I've got a lot of the, got rid of a lot of the contours. I can set it up if I like to see more or less of the marker buoys, but it's a much, much more simplified view. Or I can make it a much more uh, complicated view, depending on, depending on what I really want it to do. But if I'm, fish, if I'm fishing currently, I can switch to the fishing mode. And if I want to go back to navigation, if I'm going to, you know, drive home. If I was in a boat, for example, I could switch really quickly to a different profile, which is the, uh, which is the, uh, uh, the navigation mode. Let me go back in there again. I'm going to go back to fishing mode, chart options, fishing, and that'll change it right away for me. All right. Uh, of course, we've got the tides and currents. I'm not going to go into that. That's pretty much consistent for, through either one. But what will happen is, uh, well, why not? Oops, excuse me. I'll just show you while I'm here. So you can just go home. You can go into uh, tides right there. It'll do this proximity search. And uh, I'm in my garage. I think it'll still work. So it'll, it'll give you a location close to where I am and it'll instantly give, okay, so I didn't find anything right now. I, I don't think I have a, a, let me try one more time. I didn't know if it would work, okay. And I'm not near the water, so <laughs> that explains that. But what'll happen is typically it'll show you a view that looks just like this and um, It'll give you an idea of exactly where you are in that tidal cycle. Pretty neat stuff. I use it all the time when I'm on the water. Go back to my chart. Okay. Um, depth highlight. If, for example, uh, you are in a situation like I was, I don't know, a few days ago, you can set up, let me find it here quickly. Uh, you can set up, uh, say if the, the current depth is productive at 15 to 20 feet, you can set up a range. And let me see if I can find this really quickly. No, that's not it. Chart options. De there it is. Depth highlight. Uh, so that's my shallow water highlight. I can do a depth highlight here. Okay, so I can turn that on. And I can do a, a min range there. 15 to 20 feet, 25 feet. Let me change that to, uh, let me change that to uh, 20 feet. I will change this to 15. I find using the dial works a little bit easier for this. Okay. I'll get out of there. And so, how nice is that? If these are my productive depths and this is what the pattern is, I'm gonna follow this orange all the way through. I'm not gonna bother going up here in the shoal. I'm not gonna bother going down this shoal. I'm gonna stick to these highlighted orange spots. Really, really effective for a, a fishing tool or fishing feature. So I think that does a pretty good job of highlighting what the Coastmaster is all about. You can see I can scroll through this really quickly. Works great. You know what? There is one thing I want to I want to talk about. There is 
a little feature. Let me see if I can find it. So for example, here's a difference I did not see in the Navionics here, for example. All right, so look at those little X's. You can probably see them in there, right? So what I found are those X's, in many cases, reveal a lot of submerged features, oftentimes man-made structure that was placed there. Um, it really jumps out to me. I went exploring one of these areas or a couple of these areas and found a lot of reef balls that I never knew were there. And so I don't know what's in that particular spot, but I'd be likely to think that there is some structure that was placed there. On the Navionics chip, it doesn't really highlight it. It just calls it foul and um, really doesn't draw your attention to it. In fact, there's no shading, there's no coloration. So you really lose it in a lot of these contours here. So let me show you, let me jump to the Navionics. And I will go to settings. I've got both chips in here right now. So I'll go right to Navionics. And uh, here we go. Go to chart. And I'll go right back over here, down near the Bay Bridge. We'll view the same area. You can see it, it doesn't quite react as well as the Coastmaster. I like the Coastmaster, the interface, just how I, how I touch the screen and zoom in and out is pretty flawless. The Navionics, maybe a little bit slower. See right there, it just didn't quite do what I wanted it to do right away. So, you know, it's hard to tell exactly, but it feels to me that's a little clunkier. All right, so there's there's the same view that we just looked at, and you can tell it's it's like a, a step back in time. I had been very very happy with these Navionics charts for a long time until I found out how good the Coastmaster was. I'm gonna go in the same general location. And it just doesn't jump out at you the same way. It doesn't, the, the depth doesn't jump out. I mean, it's so hard to read these numbers. At a glance in the Coastmaster, I can say, well, yeah, that's deep water or that's shallow water. That's a bar. Here's a cut. It just, it's not the same. And I can go in here. I can look at the chart options. Navionic settings. Turn my sonar charts on. Then you get kind of a blue, um, low resolution type view. I don't want that, so I'll take that off. I'm just searching through um, the different options so you can see exactly what the, the differences are. You don't have a lot of options on the Navionics as you do the Coastmaster. Uh, you almost have too many options. So yeah, I do believe that the uh, the Navionics leaves a lot to be desired compared to the Coastmaster. So I hope this video helps you. Uh, the nice thing is the box comes with... The box comes with all you need to, um, to get this set up and running. You have to make sure you update your software. But Humminbird was really nice and included the chip for you to do so. All you have to do is plug it in your card slot and it'll take you about 15 minutes to update. So in case you get on the water, you plug your chart in and it doesn't look quite like what I just showed you, um, make sure to update your software, it'll fix the whole thing. And there's some instructions to do so, um, but really it's pretty straightforward. So I, I hope this helps make your decision about what chart system works best for you. Maybe save you a few dollars in the process. 
Um, like I said, I happen to have both charts, did a side by side. If you have any questions, put them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. I, I have both systems right here so I can go back and double check anything you like. Thanks, I'll see you next time in some other videos. If you like these, subscribe, follow along right here on YouTube or on Facebook. See ya.